This year marks the 20 year anniversary of the SPIVA scorecard, the go-to report for investors and others interested in the active versus passive debate. With two decades of data to refer to, it's worth having a look at what we can learn from these reports. SPIVA stands for the S&P Indices versus Active. The SPIVA reports are published by S&P Dow Jones Indices, a division of S&P Global. Their primary purpose is to inform the active versus passive debate by providing data on how actively managed funds around the world have performed against appropriate benchmarks. The SPIVA data tells a remarkably consistent story. The first SPIVA report covered the US equity market only. This chart shows the percentage of large cap US equity funds underperforming the S&P 500 each year since then. Since the first report, SPIVA has expanded to nine different geographies and now reports on the performance of over 100 different active fund categories around the world. A consistent theme of SPIVA scorecards over the years has been that underperformance rates generally rose with the length of the period in which performance was measured. This table shows a percentage of active Australian and US equity funds that have underperformed their relevant benchmark. Over a 15 year horizon, more than 70% of actively managed funds failed to outperform their comparison index in 38 out of the 39 categories that SPIVA measures performance for. The disclaimer, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, is included in material on all funds offered to investors, including our own. What this is basically telling potential investors is just because a fund has produced good results in the past, doesn't necessarily mean they will do so in the future. However, past performance tends to be one of the first things that potential investors look at when deciding whether to put their savings into an investment. Human nature is such that we tend to be biased towards funds that have done well in the past. With index tracking funds, there's no decision to be made around the skill of the fund manager as the manager is simply aiming to replicate the performance of the index before fees and expenses. If the index does well, so does the fund. If the index performs poorly, so does the fund. This is not the case with the active fund manager who typically aims to do better than the index and in doing so, justify their active management fee. For this exchange to be justified, any outperformance has to be the result of skill rather than luck. And if it is the result of skill, then the outperformance should persist over time. If it doesn't, that indicates that chance is playing a part in the proceedings. The SPIVA persistence report shows the percentage of funds that remain in the top quartile or top half rankings over consecutive three and five year periods. The mid 2022 US persistence report found that among all funds whose performance placed them in the top quartile for the 12 months ending June 2020, the percentage of funds that remain in the top quartile over the next two years was zero. Not a single fund that was in the top 25% in the year ending 2020 remained there for the following two years. The report also looked at the top 50% of domestic equity funds in the 12 months ending 30 June 2018 and their performance over the subsequent four years. It found that amongst all domestic equity funds, there was a 1% chance of a top half performer as of 30 June 2018, still being a top half performer as of 30 June 2022. For perspective, if performance was randomly distributed, where the chances of being in the top 50% were the result of a coin toss, that chance would be 6.25%. Turning to the Australian market, the Australia Persistence Scorecard showed that less than 10% of Australian equity funds in the top quartile as of 30 June 2020 remain there two years later. The conclusions, which SPIVA states are robust across geographies, are that most institutional managers underperform most of the time. The tendency for underperformance typically rises as the observation period lengthens. When good performance does not occur, it tends not to persist. Above average past performance does not predict above average future performance. It's impossible to know how many investors are influenced by the data presented by SPIVA over the last two decades. However, it's clear that investors are increasingly favouring passive exposures over active ones. This chart shows cumulative US fund flows from 2000 to August 2022 into active and passive funds. Since 2014, it's clear that money has been pouring into passive funds. For more detailed information about SPIVA and the performance reports, please refer to their website here.